Good morning. Please stand for the pledge. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Heavenly Father, we beseech your divine guidance in this meeting. Keep us ever mindful of our obligation. Grant us, dear Lord, wisdom, tolerance, and courage that we may well serve our county and fulfill our trust. Amen. Amen. Uh, move to approve the uh, minutes of August 1st. Second. Dis discussion? Roll? Hambly? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Swedek? Yes. Do we have any public comment regarding any pending resolutions? Okay, so we are moving on to our commendation presentation to the Medina Metropol Metropolitan Housing Authority for its 70th anniversary. Um, the Metropolitan Housing Authority was formed in 1953 as an independent political subdivision of the state of Ohio to, to provide affordable housing properties and programs to the citizens of Medina County. The Housing Authority has acquired, built, renovated, and operated over 550 housing units for households including older adults, those with special needs, and those facing housing crises crises like homelessness. The Housing Authority has developed programs to assist low and moderate income households with rental assistance and emergency services, aiding several hundred additional families each month. The Housing Authority has closely collaborated with various other county agencies, including the Medina County Adam Board, the Board of Developmental Disabilities, Job and Family Services, Veteran Services, the Medina County Economic Development Development Corporation, and many others to efficiently serve those in need of affordable housing. The Housing Authority has worked close, closely with Medina County Commissioners to expand affordable housing options for working families in Medina County as well as those who face ch special challenges. The Housing Authority has been nationally and locally recognized for its innovative approaches to developing affordable housing, generating a positive impact on property values, and improving the quality of life for those it serves. It is altogether all fitting and proper to recognize and celebrate the Housing Authority on its 70th anniversary. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Medina County Board of Commissioners that it, it, it extends its heartfelt thanks and congratulates the Medina, the Medina Metropolitan Housing Authority on its 70th anniversary of serving the residents of Medina County with quality, affordable housing. Okay, so who here is coming? Come on up. Come on in. And you are uh, Scott Miller? I am Scott Miller. Come on, Scott. Hello. I'm going to present you with this, and if you'd like to say a few words. You, you get the mic here, and here's your presentation. Oh, there we go. Well, you want to hold it and get the picture, and then you can see it. Oh, okay. I was going to put him yeah, in the middle. Do you want to put me in the middle? Yeah, yeah. You're, you're the star of this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll be brief. Um, I've, I've been sitting on the, as a board of trustee for, um, this is my third year, and uh, the work that the uh, Medina Metropolitan Housing Authority uh, has been doing for the last 70 years uh, in Medina County um, has been uh, instrumental in what the county is today. Um, it's been an honor to serve uh, on uh, this board and um, to represent uh, all the hard work that the staff of the authority uh, and the director does for the people of Medina County. So thank you for this honor. Thank you. Thank, thank you so thank much. You. I, I truly appreciate uh, the board, your board's, uh, uh, I guess, working certainly within the housing network and the various projects. And it, I mean, it's that uh, pride of the collaboration that we've seen. And of course, we've got even more exciting times when we're talking about the uh, emergency housing shelter uh, and th that the opportunities of working together and to have something that literally this, this county has needed uh, for decades. And, and indeed, I greatly appreciate the Housing Authority Board being willing to step up and really take a leadership role in making that happen. Well, thank you. And thank you for your support of that effort. And hopefully, 
time marches on, we get it done. Indeed. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, next up we have our resolutions. First up we have County Engineer, and I believe we have Dan here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Dan. We've got two resolutions for your consideration today. The <coughs> first is the necessity to close River Sticks Road between Greenwich and Aurora Road. And the second is finding the public convenience and welfare requires the replacement of bridge number 14 on Sanford Road in Harrisville Township. Uh, move to approve both resolutions. Second. Discussion? Roll? Hambly? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Swedek? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Next up, we have Jeremy Cinco, our sanitary engineer. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, two resolutions for consideration today. The first is authorizing change order number two for the Medina County Sanitary Engineer's office renovation project. And the second is authorizing the sanitary engineer to obtain easements for various water main improvement projects. Uh, move to approve both resolutions. Second. Discussion? Roll? Hambly? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Swedek? Yes. Thank, right. you, Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have Stephen Sakura from Job, Job and Family Services. Good morning, Commissioners. Good, Good morning. morning. Just one resolution this morning. Um, as part of August being proclaimed uh, Child Support Awareness Month, um, we would like to ask for a resolution authorizing an agreement with Medina County Show Business Company and Medina County Job and Family Services uh, Child Support Division in order for them to rent a movie theater for a family movie night. Uh, Move to approve. Second. Discussion? Roll? Hambly? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Swedek? Yes. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Next up, we have Shannon Ryan from Transit. Good morning. I have one resolution for your consideration approving a contract with the Greater Cleveland uh, Regional Transit Authority, Medina County Commissioners. This is an exchange of funds operating for capital allow us to provide services. Uh, move to approve. Second. Discussion? Roll? Ambly? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Swedek? Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very good. Thanks. Next up, we have Nicole Lee from Human Resources. Good morning. Good morning. I have two resolutions for you this morning. My first one is approving personnel changes for the employees under the jurisdiction of the Medina County Commissioners. I have two promotions, one at JFS, one at the Office for Older Adults, two rate increases, one in maintenance, one in Office for Older Adults one removal and maintenance, and one resignation at JFS. My second resolution is amending the table of organization for the Medina County Home and the Office for Older Adults. Uh, move to approve uh, both resolutions. Second. Discussion? Roll? Hambly? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Swedek? Yes. Thank, Thank you, you. Thank you. Next up, we have Brett Thomas, our finance director. <coughs> Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. morning. Aaron, nice to have you back with us this Thank week. Thank you. Uh, I have seven resolutions for your consideration today. Um, first one is amending appropriations. Uh, biggest one on there being our social services levy. Our second resolution is transferring appropriations between various funds. Our third resolution is expense adjustments. We had a uh, stormwater salary that was getting uh, pulled from the wrong account, so we're moving that over. The fourth resolution, we have cash transfers for different funds. Um, the large one on here is for the cost of Tyler's uh, civil serve for the sheriff's office. Um, the fifth, fifth resolution that we have today is for print shop revenue from the various departments. Our sixth resolution is expenses of county officials for uh, meetings and conferences. Nothing on this list is uh, out of state. And our seventh and final resolution is the weekly bills in the amount of $859,090.75. And as always, copies of the bills are available in the auditor's office upon request. Uh, move to approve these seven resolutions. Second. Discussion? Roll? Hambly? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Swedek? Yes. Thank you, Brett. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we have our department updates. First up, we have Greg Brown from our county home. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Starting out with census, uh, we're currently at 43. Um, although, while I'm here now, there should be our 44th resident arriving today. Wow. So that's good. I think that's the highest since you've been here. Very close. close since 2020, right? Yeah. 
and there's still two potential residents later on this month. Uh, staffing, sorry, allergies today. <clears throat> uh, we've got, I've got one time, uh, one full-time position, one third shift, uh, an aide position that's open, but we're filling that with all of our aides and our intermittent aides, which thank you so much for approving my table of uh, organization approval. We're adding a lot more intermittent aides in there. Um, just, it's a win-win situation for the home. Um, as far as events go, uh, some of the things from, from last month, Sharon Center concert, um, Access the Arts is always doing a great job for us there. Um, the residents did vote in our library. The Litchfield Band, over 40 years attending the home, came and, and uh, did a, a concert for us. And then in August, fair, uh, senior day on August 1st. Um, then Sharon Center again for a big band concert. Um, then uh, Friday was the Holmes Day for uh, Heritage Day for Manning the Booth. I also got to speak at the, uh, the auction, the 4-H auction. I don't have the totals yet, but the, the community is always very generous. Uh, and then, yeah, at the, at, at the booth, we kind of split it up. Amy Perrine took the first shift, and I split it with Miranda for the second. Uh, <coughs> concerts, crafts, so many things happening. Nature Pam's back. You know, she's doing the Everglades this time. Uh, donations have still been Crop King and Holy Martyrs Church, their food pantry. No major uh, renovations, but the pending is still that restoration in the A1 uh, men's restroom. It's getting below the floors. That's that's the challenge for the maintenance department. Other than that, that's all I have. Any questions? Great. Good job. Yeah. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Thanks. Okay, next up we have Eric Hinch from Soil and Water. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, all right. Uh, since our last update, our office has been on 15 technical events, including two drainage site visits, one planning commission review, three pond permit applications, two pond management visits, one rain garden site assessment, one erosion issue, three land INEs, and two native plant site assessments, and we surveyed a site with ODA engineers for a potential grass waterway. Uh, education events in the last month. A presentation was done at Highland Library on soil types and native plants on July 13th. On July 18th, staff from our office assisted with Save the Lake and their bioreactor monitoring and data collection for Chippewa Lake. Our buyback program is currently accepting applications. We have received 39 submissions so far, resulting in 65 species being removed at this point and all of that information can be found on our website. August 2nd, a presentation was done on gardening for wildlife in Medina Library. And in the last week, board members and staff members spent time manning our booth at the fair. We had an interactive area for kids. We had our Plinko board out uh, and we had a question wheel that people seemed to enjoy. Our summer newsletter is being finalized this week. In it, you will find information for our native plant sale on September 8th and 9th. Uh, we have a new garden cover crop sale that we're doing this year. The deadline for that will be September 8th. Uh, fish sale pickup dates will be September 28th. Upcoming presentations on August 19th at the Highland Library. There will be a talk on invasive species alternates on August 24th at the Brunswick Library, there is a presentation on retention ponds and healthy lawns. August 31st, there will be a discussion on soils uh, with the OSU Master Gardeners. Uh, there are several dates for our Leave the Leaves presentation, September 14th, 20th, and October 4th. Our August board meeting will take place on the 16th at our office. 6090 Wedgwood is open to the public if anyone is interested. And if you have a group, club, or municipality that is looking for a speaker, please reach out to our office for anything conservation-based. You mean the booth at the fair was interactive for kids? I ended up doing that. Oh, you yeah? Know, it's like <laughs> <laughs> was I thought it was really good I, with that little thing going down and ended up seeing the demonstration for permeable concrete yeah. pavement So as, yeah, well, you were, as you were there. So that was designed for kids? Yeah. I thought adults had fun with it, too. <laughs> well, good. You did really did well it. on the trivia, though, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks.
Okay, next up we have Philip Titterington from Adam Board. For a minute there, I thought I was clearing out the room. Look at that. <laughs> Small, thank you for uh, allowing me to present. I'll make it brief. They knew you were coming. Ish. Yeah. <laughs> you put me la yeah, near the end there. And yeah. Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to go right to the end, but I'm going to the front eventually here. But just want to, uh, to your attention here, on August 25th at 10 a.m., Alternative Paths, they have opened up a Brunswick office. So there's a physical office in, in Brunswick, so they're going to have a ribbon cutting. If you haven't gotten uh, uh, an invite, you, you will. Um, by opening up in Brunswick, creates better access. And now Alternative Paths has a physical office in Brunswick, Medina, Wadsworth, and Lodi. So we're, we're branching out, so that's good. August 31st is uh, National Overdose Awareness Day. Hope Recovery Community does an annual event. It will be held again on the 31st, 6.30, at the Church of the Nazarene in Brunswick. Um, so if you haven't been invited, you are now, and you'll get some formal, and, and I'll be there as well. Uh, the month of September is National Recovery Month, so Hope Recovery Community is actually doing their annual Ride for Recovery. It's their big fundraiser, and that will take place on Saturday, September 16th at 10 a.m. at Radiant Life Church in Wadsworth. I'll be there kind of kicking it off. And every year it's been going on. I keep trying to get my wife to allow me to buy a motorcycle so I can participate. It is work-related. <laughs> but that's falling on deaf ears at this point. She feels like uh, she would rather me safe than ride then. So, all right, we'll try next year. September is also Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. And the Medina County Suicide Prevention Coalition's annual step up to prevent suicide walk is scheduled for Sunday, October 15th. And that happens uh, here in Medina on the Square. And then finally, on September 14th, is the Human Services Levy Renewal Campaign Kickoff Picnic. You'll we'll get some formal uh, invite to that as well. Uh, we're planning on having it on uh, the 14th over at the VFW Post 5137, which is on Pearl, or so it might be the one down the end there. Um, so it's going to take place from 430 to 7. Cool. Information's Good. forthcoming. The one by the helicopter. I think it is. Because okay. I think I, I, yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. So we are finalizing things there. It should be a nice event. Um, so now I just want to give you some updates here. I'll, I'll run through them. Um, so you know we continue to receive many many different requests for services. We triage. We are um, you know helping a lot of families. Our supportive housing units. We have 44, and the request you know exceeds what we have and we're able to provide. The resolution with MMHA, we do appreciate that partnership. They manage all of our properties. They work with us. So uh, that that is something that uh, works very well, and we appreciate that. Um, the other thing is, is adult group homes. I tell you every time I come here, the need is still there for individuals. Think of the individuals who are coming with psychiatric hospitalizations, and we need to you know integrate them back in the community, but they need a, a, a more intense service or, or uh, location. There aren't too many beds, and when we get beds, the cost is at minimal 3500 per individual per month. So we work and we thank the uh, uh, Alternative Paths and the other organizations who help wrap around community-based services so that we can keep them as much as possible. Um, and then just uh, it tying into the emergency shelter, uh, the Adam Board's Northland 2 property is 11 units there, and that's set up for, and that houses individuals who are homeless. They meet the federal definition of homelessness. And of course, we have uh, more of a need than, than we do have units. So moving on, just to give you some numbers, there were 5,578 total co uh, clients served during the uh, quarter that I'm reporting. So the quarter that I'm reporting is April through June. So keep that in mind. Um, that's from Catholic Charities, Ohio Guidestone, as well as Alternative Paths. Of the 5,078, Clients, 88% were adult, 12% were youth. Of those, 34% of the adults and 20% of the youth are receiving psychiatric services, so some of the more intensive um, community-based treatment. Approximately 58% of the youth are diagnosed with serious emotional disturbance. So that's 58% of the population of the youth that are going through our services really have that severe need so uh, it's out there we're hitting them 
and, and we continue to work with not only the schools, but all the other agencies as well. Um, and our newly constructed Youth Resiliency and Counseling Center is up and running, and they're seeing individuals and things, so uh, all is working out there. I mentioned about the human services levy. I mean, it's critical. Uh, those, that, those funds are, are what's allowed us to expand and create the Youth Resiliency Center. Um, it also helps us with crisis. Uh, we use that funding for our crisis services. So during this reporting period, there were 862 calls or engagements through the hotline, the crisis hotline. 73 individuals verbalized suicide thoughts, suicidal thoughts. There were 27 active rescues that occurred. So when individuals call, they're talking to a, a licensed individual. That individual feels like, uh oh, they're, you know, they need some some more. So they'll dispatch either a group. Uh, a mobile crisis team that will go out there or law enforcement. Uh, there were 44 referrals that were made directly from law enforcement for crisis intervention. And that's key because over the years through CIT training and the partnership, we've grown and, the, and law enforcement has been more comfortable because they understand that, you know, by calling them, we're really helping them as well. So, so that's, that's actually a big number there, so we appreciate that. And then Alternative Paths operates our loss team, which is uh, local outreach for individuals, families who uh, just suffered, somebody had a, a suicide. We've had two calls that, that came out during this reporting period. Levy funding's huge for uh, recovery support, so recovery community is our biggest um, supporter on that. They provide a diverse, wide range. They're in Brunswick, Wadsworth, and their main locations in Medina. Um, they have a 24-7 HOPE link program, so individuals can call for crisis. Crisis can link them over to the HOPE program, but what that does is that provides them, whoever calls, with a certified peer supporter, somebody who can speak the language with them, who can hold their hand, who could walk them through, who can get them to where they need to go, to go if they need some additional services at that time. There are 15 certified peer recovery supporters working at Hope Recovery Community and six at Ohio Guidestone. That blend is important because the, when you have Ohio Guidestone, a certified community-based behavioral health, they can also bill Medicaid. So there's another source of funding and it's not just the Adam Board. But then you also have Hope Recovery Community who can have and train individuals who have gone through the pro, uh, through Hope Recovery Community to also provide that support. So there's that blend and there's that balancing act as well. So. Um, there were 90 individuals that were linked to detox, residential treatment, or recovery housing through Hope Recovery Community during that period. So the way that works is, is, is they'll work with that individual, they'll use their insurance for the residential facility, not Hope Recovery Community, but what insurance doesn't cover or expenses that aren't covered, the Adam Board covers. So we're able to work on that. And then there were 100 inmates inside the Medina County Jail that received peer support during this reporting period, so they're there. Um, MAT, medication assisted treatment, is also another important um, support that the levy helps us fund. Often MAT can be started in the jail, so there's that connection. Or individuals who unfortunately go to jail that might already be on MAT, they can continue with that process as well, so they're not really skipping a beat, so that's pretty nice. There are 88 individuals that received uh, medication assisted treatment through Ohio Guidestone. So there's also a walk-in clinic, so somebody who's not necessarily engaged with an agency or they just, they wanna start this kind of a program, they can go into Ohio Guidestone as a walk-in clinic, get the psychiatric help, get the assessment, and then they can get connected with MAT as well. Uh, we operate the Discovery Recovery House, which is a 12-bed women's house that was full, continues to be full with a wait list. Um, Kathy's house has 40 beds, they're full as well. Um, you know, on any given day there'll be a, a vacancy because somebody will move out or somebody who, um, and then they'll fill it, but there's always a waiting list for those as well. Um, I mean, that's, we know that there's a need, and then obviously if you have a good program, you have good services, people come from afar to utilize those services, so. Um, so basically then just kind of close with the state budget. You know, we're always watching the state budget, looking at that. So the projection, what we're looking at is, is it looks like Adam Board should be flat funded. So that's good and bad. So as you followed the state budget, there was talk about cuts and everything else, then we're kind of really nervous. But we got it to a point with, with the help of, of legislators and support such as you all um, to a flat funding. Now. We'll take that as a win, 
but as you can, we've been flat funded for 10 years. The continuum of care has increased. Our requirements have increased and expenses have increased. So being flat funded sometimes can be seen as a cut, if you will. We're not keeping up with the expenses. However, in our county, based on the collaborations and the partnerships that we create and we work with and that levy funding, we're at least able to hit the continuum that we have set and then maintain and then we can always look at increasing as well. So uh, I close with uh, this year, you know, in November, we have the social services, human services levy that's on the ballot thanks to your old support. We have this uh, kickoff fundraiser in, on September 14th and we hope we see you there. Any questions? That wasn't bad. No, nope, that's really good. You were <coughs> awesome. Uh -huh. um, a couple meetings ago, we did the stepping up initiative. We did. And um, is there a formal kickoff to that too, or has that been scheduled? Or see, what? that was the one bullet I think I missed, <laughs> just for conserving time. Yeah. So the stepping up program, where we're at, Commissioner, is um, we've submitted the formal resolution. They've received it. We're working with Justice Stratton to identify what there'll be is, is there'll be like an initial welcome training about two three hours and we're solidifying dates okay. that they're available they'll give us dates and then we'll kick it off so so we're hopeful in the next month or two that that'll start <clears throat> but also and is consistent with past updates a lot of the things you're talking about involvement in the jail those things are already going on but this will just okay. kind of be a more maybe galvanizing approach yeah, to we're going to formalize what we're doing yeah. so the the good thing about it is 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 with the stepping up program we probably meet now we probably meet 98 percent because of the formal resolution everything that we're doing we'll just tie it in we'll get that formal training be part of and the training is really going to get us uh part of the network if you yeah. will right yeah. so a seat at the table and that'll allow us to look at additional resources that might be available that weren't uh, but with the training i totally uh, i, I uh, envision where when they start going over things that each county should be re we're just going to be checking off boxes mm -hmm. like yep done it do it we're doing it so good Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Philip. Very good. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Okay, we do have a commissioner's resolution here. Um, we are uh, appointing and reappointing representatives to the Medina County Home Advisory Council. We are appointing Kate Schatz. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And she will be the representative for Job and Family Services. We are reappointing Debbie Benke for the nonprofit agencies, David Loffey for Veteran Services Commission, and Deb McCune for County Home Residents. Uh, Move to approve. Second. Discussion? Roll. Hambly? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Swedek? Yes. We do have an announcement to make. The Solid Waste District will not be accepting household hazardous waste or specialty waste tomorrow, Wednesday, August 9th. These items can be brought on Saturday, August 12th, and then on Monday, Wednesdays, and Saturdays thereafter. And I'm not sure, but I think that has something to do with our construction. With the goal. Campus, yeah, yeah uh, we're, we're almost through with our construction yep. out there. Um, but we will not be doing hazardous waste it's just tomorrow. Just to make it make it safe for those people right. visiting and with all the construction going on, it's right. just too complicated in terms of directing traffic uh, safely. Okay, um, I'm gonna guess we don't. But do we have any public? Com oh, we do have public comment. Come on up, Stan. Okay. She shouldn't have guessed that I we didn't. I shouldn't have guessed, yeah. but it was like so few people. No, left. no. Okay. <laughs> I've been with you for six or seven months and yeah. haven't said much. Uh, my name is Stan Sheets. Uh, my address 342 East Liberty Street, Medina. Private sector, retired attorney, retired hotelier, three hotels here in Medina County. Retired group uh, travel coordinator, retired retailer, retired conference and party center operator. And the only reason I bring this to you is because these comments relate to all of those subjects. These, I have five accolades for you today, which is rare oh, for me. Okay. Right. <laughs> I'm glad can this is being start, recorded. Can we start, start this date? <laughs> can we get the rest of the room full? Can we fill up the room again? We'll have it on loop on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first, uh, and again, I've been here the past six, seven months. I listen most of the time. I just want to be an informed citizen. But first, I was very pleased when Bill Hudson was selected to be the person elected for the judgeship. I feel he's very impartial. I think I'm happy for Bill, I'm happy for all of us, I'm happy for his retirement, uh, and I'm happy with your new appointment of Aaron uh, Harrison. 
Uh, I just think it's delightful to have a, another younger person involved, yes. some new blood, some new ideas. I feel like Aaron is an idealist and I know he's a respected attorney. I've told Aaron, I gave him a six month grace period before I would be critical <laughs> whatsoever. That it has expired and I expect him to seize the day now and express his opinions more aggressively rather than simply acquiescing as he was learning the process. So I'm, I'm just wishing all three of you the best. I love and respect you. There's times I don't, I, you probably don't believe that, but I, <laughs> but I do, you're in a thankless position. I was also happy with finally the retirement of Scott Miller. I'm sorry it didn't work out with Amy. I'm thrilled that Chris is back. I hope that they're, you're looking at some type of transition because I assume Chris is here as an interim measure. I feel like he brings us stability and I felt like during Scott's tenure at times it was more like uh, on the job training and when he was overseeing the courthouse, I just felt like he really didn't have any construction expertise even though I felt he did a very good job overall. Fourth, I applaud you for considering the withdrawal from the WACA, the five member community uh, regional operation that's dominated by Cuyahoga County and the, 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 the urban areas versus our rural area. And I'm just sick of the gerrymandering that's going on and they're redefining these definitions for their purposes rather than ours. And I hope that you'll take an aggressive position, not only talking to an outside consul, but possibly talking to other counties such as Wayne County, Richland County, Ashland County, the 71 corridor, because it seems like you could create a four to six member coalition that would have much more in common with you where you could share goals, share resources, and share opportunities to get things done. I know how frustrating it was for me when I worked on the bypass for almost 10 years. I got all kinds of promises from everyone, but NOACA blocked everything. Uh, even when I got resolutions from every single township and city on where it should go, there still was no way to go forward with NOACA's positions. But I just feel like if you look at Wayne and you look at Ashland and you look at Richland and the corridor there, they have so much more in common with us than what we do with the city. And my fifth accolade is the final appointment of the new Visitors and Conventions Bureau uh, Executive Director. That is the type of seasoned person that I know most of the hoteliers were looking for rather than simply a political appointee. And I'm thrilled that she has some connections here with the county. I'm just hoping that she doesn't run into a circumstance of micromanagement by either yourselves or the economic development board that there's some independence because I've been concerned about three appointees that are chamber members, three appointees that are your economic development directors because I feel like sometimes they can't speak their true mind because they're worried about potential repercussions because they're caught up with budgets and approvals of everything they have to do. Mm -hmm. So I'm just hoping that she has some independence and that we see some real good things come from this. And I thank you for the opportunity to address you today. We appreciate your comments very much, Stan. And, and I, I think uh, I can speak for the three of us that, that we have been very much hands off in the selection of the new person. Yes. And we let the appointees choose. And I feel they did an excellent job choosing yes. an uh, extraordinarily qualified person. Yes. So. Uh, and and I, I'm mindful that actually the board and the construction of designing that Convention Visitors Bureau when we had that transition period which there was just three of us yeah which should that was meant to be just very short term that we've actually established i think a very good balance within that uh ge even geographically mm -hmm. and i think yeah. that's really was important Understood. as well as people that will be actively supporting the director and i think uh, that was missing before mm -hmm. uh in that and uh, and i've uh, heard nothing but accolades with some of my connections down to holmes county that it's they're, they're mad at us for her coming, but that, that's a good sign. So yeah, I think and you know when you have a nine-member board, uh, it's it's very rare to have everyone be all in on, on the selection of her. And from what I've heard, um, she was by and far yes. yep. a unanimous no, decision. I agree. I was just surprised there weren't more applications. When I had applications just from my hotel manager, mm -hmm. I had as many as 20 to 25 applications, mm -hmm. and I was only in the 35 to $40,000 range. 
this was a seventy-five thousand. I mean, if I was thirty years younger, I would have been applying for it and <laughs> left my law my law practice. Well, at this point, we just needed one, really one good one, and we yeah. got it. So. Yeah, <laughs> you did. I mean, I'm thrilled that you it did really, get her. Yes. Thank, Thank you. I'm, I'm just going to take issue with one thing though that you said. Yeah. And that long list of, of things that you do, I don't think you're retired from any of those positions that <laughs> I see. Well, Based on what I see. I'm still relatively up. active. So, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I'm still waiting for my grace period. Yeah. You got it. I, 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 well, my comment relating to the seasoning was about you had been a politician oh, for several God. years, God. not God. relating God. to I, age. I, I, got, I got it. <laughs> Nobody believes that. <laughs> Thank you. Take care, Stan. Thank you, Stan. Thank you. Okay, so discussion session. Anybody else have anything? Okay, Steve. Nope. Um, Karen. It's election day, I guess. We have it an August election, election this day. year, so I haven't voted yet. I'll be heading out to vote after the meeting. Um, I think everybody should do the same. It's a opportunity we have, whether you agree with having an election in August I or not. Really uh, we uh, one issue. We should all exercise our opportunity Amen. and our right. Amen. Well, speaking of one of Stan's comments, I thought that maybe we'd just throw out a quick dis discussion on our $82,000 NOECA invoice bill. Yes. Yeah, and I, I, <laughs> I commend our finance department for promptly um, paying all of our bills that come in, but that's one I'm, I'm inclined to, to maybe wait on. Uh, I would for also now, like to wait. Um, just to see where where things fall and where things fall down. I've noticed in past years, or in at the beginning, as of the beginning of this year, um, we were you know paid in, in full and in good standing. And it appears not all the other uh, organizations and, and municipalities and subdivisions do that. So, do, do you happen to know at what point in time? Obviously, I'm the old guy seasoned here. I haven't been there for 18 years, <laughs> but the Lorraine County had. Their tradition was to have every local jurisdiction pay a portion of that bill. Commissioners paid one. Do they still do that? I, I yeah, because the um, the state the the status of that that I saw, I think it was in, back in the January agenda, so it's kind of a distant recollection. But it had certain uh, cities on the like the city of Cleveland and Cuyahoga County were broken out. There was right. a, a, a breakdown of, uh, and I couldn't say which ones, but yeah. a couple of the different. Municipalities in Lorain County were, were broken up. So we had so. we had a, hit, a time period where there were history the communities wouldn't over a special in Lorain County for years not pay anything. Yeah. And the only thing you could do is say, well, you're not going to get any of the services, and the, the townships out there uh, didn't matter because they really didn't get anything anyway. They're right. in the middle of nowhere. But I don't believe any of our jurisdictions get a bill for no action. Oh, no, no, no. no, no, we, no. We it's cover up that. to right, each, right. actually, by agreement, it's up to each county how to do it. Yeah. At one point and, I'm not, and I certainly would be in favor of changing one, that. At one point in time, when I, when I came in back in 97, we split the bill with uh, with the county highway engineer. Oh, okay. And then, as a deal, we kind of then worked with, the, well, the commissioners would because of the water quality, uh, water quality planning and all the other uh, aspects of, of NOACA. And, they, and I think we were, you know, obviously working with the county engineer. The engineer didn't like having to split that, yeah. that paying a portion of that. But uh, every county determines for themselves how they split the bill. So it really is up to that county to determine. I, I would just... Yeah, yeah, I'd like to wait a few months because mm, okay. eighty-two thousand dollars annually is yeah. an extraordinary amount of money for our community, considering the give back to and, the Diana County. And there have been there have been ongoing discussions that I've had with different people, including speaking of county engineers, speaking with uh, Andy Conrad, where he's attempted in in points in the past. I'm not saying it's been a pending request, but to obtain information about how much federal money comes in on behalf of Medina County. And we seem to, for whatever reason, I've got my opinions that I'll, I don't want to speculate, but for whatever reason, we seem to have a difficult time getting answers to some of those questions. Well, I think, too, more, even more recently, whenever he appointed an alternate, and there was the challenge for several months as to whether he had the authority to appoint an alternate, right. when historically that never was an issue. And, and they were requiring that it process through a committee, yeah. which was absolutely contrary to, the bylaws. contrary to our bylaws or the agreement between the counties. Yep. And that, that's that's. And crazy. ultimately, they did seat his his alternate, well, but uh, but I just don't know that other, I don't know that everybody gets that kind of pushback, and it is frustrating. And, yeah. and where do you, are, are we are in discussing alternatives? Um, because weren't you going to look into an attorney for that? Yes, and and so um, we also have we have a couple different avenues in front of us. And um, 
I did circulate a letter that, that it, what, what, since we're talking about it, I'd like to send off to Representative Ray related to um, some, some potential state, state legislative options that she might be able to look into, and she's expressed a very supportive posture, kind of like Mr. Sheets mentioned, with um, you know seeing what other options might be out there that would serve the county better. And so I'd like to get that sent off. Yes. And then I think okay, as, as yep. she's pursuing statewide options, I think having a, a deeper dive with, with outside counsel and we've got some names, and actually, again, I'll point to, to Mr. Sheets, who suggested a few different people. Just kind of vet three or four different options yeah, and I'd see really who. I'd really like to find somebody who's specialized in well, this and, type of Well, unfortunately, it, it, it's kind of like over many years, it's been kind of a hodgepodge of our relationship as to uh, our governance and the involvement of the state. The state has required us for water quality purposes, yep. transit, you start going down the list, and uh, certainly, uh, uh, Representative Ray has, has the, the access to legislative services to do some of the research as to what our options might be. It's it's truly not a, a legal counsel right. research, but it is at that level from a policy be able to identify, if you will, some of those entanglements. And I think that's what we're trying to do is figure out the entanglements and right. see what what strings we can pull from that. Well, I look yeah. at it as belt and suspenders. If yes, the if the belt is our yep. is yep. our our own outside counsel who's advising us right. on our options, and the suspenders is the whatever legislative paths there may be, then and, we've got a good. And I think that it, they could work hand in glove. Obviously, yep. once LSC identifies some of those, legal counsel will be able to look at that and then do right. the additional that we would need to take. Or some vice versa, they or may identify versa. options that, yep. that Columbus really should look us, at. Um, no. Yeah when we're ready to pull a trigger on a specific yes okay yep good and and then in the meantime i think i will get that letter off to representative Absolutely. ray i i had drafted it yeah. um wanted to circulate to everybody but uh, it, happy to put everybody's names on it too if that's something we want to do should it just come from me or i, I think all of us that's fine yeah, yeah. Came from okay all of us that's so what i thought United too support. yep yep yeah, yeah. And, and there is the climate action plan public sessions coming uh, coming up here yes. in the next several weeks. And we do have, I think now four of those scheduled or in the process of being scheduled for uh, for Medina County. So, Good. and I don't have those dates right for me, but I'll bring those next week. Yep, great. All right. Anything else? I don't have anything. Okay, I'll Adjourn. entertain a motion. Mo move to adjourn. Second. Roll. Nibley. Yes. Harrison. Yes. Wedding. Yes. Happy election day, everyone. Mm -hmm.